of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And peace be with you. And Welcome everyone to this, the 28th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Where's the year going? As we begin our celebration today, let's do so calling to mind the Lord's mercy. And let's remember those times we may not have lived in that mercy or shown that mercy to others. Lord Jesus, you call us to new life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. You teach us by your truth. Christ, have mercy. And you nourish us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. And together we cry out. Glory to God in the May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all people a banquet of rich food, a banquet of fine wines, of food rich and juicy, of fine strained wines. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, see this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exalt and we rejoice that he has saved us, for the hand of the Lord rests on this mountain. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from a letter of, the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. I know how to be poor and I know how to be rich too. I have been through my initiation and now I am ready for anything, anywhere. Full stomach or empty stomach, poverty or plenty. There is nothing I cannot master with the help of the one who gives me strength. All the same, it was good of you to share with me in my hardships. In return, my God will fulfill all your needs in Christ Jesus as lavishly as only God can. Glory to God, our Father, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Enlighten the eyes of our heart that we might see how great is the hope to which we are called. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a feast for his son's wedding. He sent his servants to call those who had been invited, but they would not come. Next, he sent some more servants. Tell those who have been invited, he said, that I have my banquet all prepared. My oxen and fatted cattle have been slaughtered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding. But they were not interested. One went off to his farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, maltreated them and killed them. The king was furious. He dispatched his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burnt their town. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but as those who were invited proved to be unworthy, go to the crossroads in the town and invite everyone you can find to the wedding. So these servants went out onto the roads and collected together everyone they could find, bad and good alike and the wedding hall was filled with guests. When the king came in to look at the guests, he noticed one man who was not wearing a wedding garment. And he said to him, How did you get in here, my friend, without a wedding garment? And the man was silent. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him out into the dark, where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. I'll put out a bit of a spoiler alert. Just letting you know, there are 49 days until we begin the season of Advent, which means four weeks after that, it's Christmas. The gospel today that we listen to gives us a hint of our Advent journey. It gives us an image that in some ways prefigures the second coming of Jesus when time will end. That's what Advent begins to call us to, a recognition of when Jesus will come again. So we've got that hint of it today in the gospel we listen to. The image we listen to in today's gospel of the gracious king and the parable that's told about him 
the king who invited his friends to attend the banquet of his son's wedding, was not an everyday occurrence. It would have been a time of great rejoicing, great celebration. You can only imagine how insulted the king would feel when he, his invitation was not accepted. How would you feel if you had everything prepared and all you received were excuses, others not showing up, and others abusing and killing the messengers that you sent to tell them it was time? What a terrible turnabout of events. For the early Christian community, that image of a wedding banquet had two purposes. The first was always to bring an understanding of the sense of Eucharist. The other was that sense of eternal life and how we had a place in it. Eternal life, not just associated with the end of time, but also that sense of belonging to the kingdom and the responsibilities that go with it. Today's parable is more concerned with who is in and who is out and the why of it. We can see through the tenants who turned down the opportunity to go to a royal wedding something which would be unimaginable. But it's also seen from the other side, the poor who recognise the gift and the giver. They get dressed up and they have somewhere to go. And it's seen in the imposter who is not correctly dressed for the occasion. It's also seen in the fact that he's speechless when he is called to account. This person is a significant image in the early Christian community and especially for Matthew's community. For you see, he represents the one who has entered the Christian community but is now betraying the community. Matthew's community was living through a massive time of persecution. When they were discovered, they were thrown out. This was a difficulty for Matthew's community because those who betrayed the community, it led to death within the community. So what does all this have to do with our own time? It's not about how one dresses for mass or for eternal life. It's not about our fear of being found wanting and being unable to mouth the right words when we're called to account. It's about being poor enough to recognize the gift we have been given, the gift of God's invitation to faith and about being generous enough to respond completely. For taking care about what we say and do the values by which we live our lives at home and work, at play, and in the way we relate to each other is how we show that we mean business, that we mean what we profess. It's also how others legitimately judge whether we are really genuine about our faith or are we just an imposter. As Father Richard Leonard points out, like the earliest Christians, when we were baptised, we were clothed in a white garment, a wedding robe. Like theirs, our baptismal day is not just a naming ceremony. It's not just a social day. It's the day we were issued with a standing invitation to the feast of life, life in Christ, where people act as they profess, and where frauds are spotted a mile off. In 1989, I watched a movie for the first time, Dead Poets Society. It's one of my favorites. There is a scene where, the, where there are two students who share a room, and they're discussing what it means to belong to the group. Neil, an aspiring actor, is trying to motivate young Todd, the shy, retiring boy who believes himself to be worthless. Todd is so terrified of his own shadow that he does not want to read in class 
and begins to stutter whenever he's put, asked upon to do so. Todd only joined the group because Neil promised him that he would not have to read. He could act as secretary. Now Neil is trying to draw him out and in doing so he says these profound words. Being in means you got to do something, not just say you're in. There is no group where Neil's words to Todd apply more than the, being a follower of Christ. Saying we have faith is not enough. The Second Vatican Council called for the faithful to have full, conscious and active participation in the life not only of the church but especially in liturgy because it recognised that liturgy is the expression of faith. The liturgy must reflect the life it nourishes beyond. It's to the liturgy that we bring our participation in spreading the gospel. And it's from the liturgy that we go prepared to participate fully in the world as bearers of good news or bearers of Christ's love. Many people have difficulty with the ending of today's parable. The beginning's fine. The banquet has been prepared, as foreshadowed by Isaiah in our first reading. But those invited have not only refused the invitation, but have done so with violence. The problem for most is where the guest without appropriate garments is treated the way he is by the Lord. It flies in the face of everything that Jesus has said about all being welcome in the reign of God, particularly the poor and the outcast. But the answer to the dilemma is found in Neil's words to Todd. You just, just coming to the feast is not enough. Being passive is not enough. There is an expectation on those who accept an invitation. At baptism, we are dressed in a special garment. This garment is not about looking pretty for the photos. It's a sign to the world and a reminder to us that we now belong to the mission and the ministry of Jesus. Different people at the banquet of the reign of God have different roles and ways of living out their participation in spreading the message. St Paul made it clear to the Corinthians in his analogy of the community as a body. He also made it clear that the difference does not lessen the importance of the roles or the ways they are lived. Many people of all faiths take a passive, even negative view of what they need to do. For some, it's as simple as baptism and then keeping the rules, attending Eucharist and the other sacraments. The parable that tells us that just turning up is not enough. There are expectations on all of us, from children who play in the aisles or around the sanctuary, the ones who remind us of the delights of innocence, to the elderly who keep the memory of family and faith alive for all of us. All have a place and a ministry and the capacity fulfill it, to fulfil it. Our active participation in the proclamation of the gospel is a right as well as a privilege. It's also an obligation that we receive through baptism. It's not just a privilege given by human authority. We have been invited to the banquet of the Lord on his holy mountain. Our acceptance of that invitation is shown by how we take up the mission of Jesus. The response we make is the appropriate garment of ministry. That's how we participate in the banquet of Christ.
So let us pray together the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, gathered as God's holy people, let us intercede for the needs of the world. That the church will be nourished at the table of the Lord and by its openness and hospitality will draw all people to the banquet of life. In your goodness, Lord, hear our prayer. That nations suffering from drought and famine will be filled with God's bounty and will be aided by countries with abundant resources. In your goodness, Lord, hear our prayer. That those preparing for sacraments will be filled with joyful expectation and will grow in their love for God and those within their community who, through the body and blood of Christ. In your goodness, Lord, hear our prayer. That the poor and the needy will find us generous and a generous and kind community, prepared to accept and support them in all they need. In your goodness, Lord, hear our prayer. That we who gather around the Lord's table will accept the invitation to his feast by changing our lives and removing obstacles that block others. In your goodness, Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and housebound will be shown compassion and comforted by Christ, the Good Shepherd, especially the sick in our communities and those who are affected in any way by the coronavirus. In your goodness, Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will forever enjoy the heavenly feast and the eternal banquet, including those who have died recently, especially those who have died due to the coronavirus and those whose anniversaries occur at this time. In your goodness, Lord, hear our prayer. Generous God, you lavish us with kindness and invite all to the wedding feast. Hear the prayers of your people and help us to prepare for the coming of your kingdom, where, you will dwell, where we will dwell in your house forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. You give life, 
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord set this sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good of the Lord Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changes of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and the saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Oh. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. And at the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always and let's greet each other with peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And the Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord.
Thanks for being with us, everyone, and we'll see you next week. God bless. Thank you.